In this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to make the most epic party nacho casserole of all time. So follow along. Now in our last video, you might remember I taught you guys how to make your own uh, homemade corn tortilla chips and queso dip. Now this is what's going to make the base of our nacho casserole. It's going to be, I guess you could call it the casserole portion of it. So I do highly recommend that you go watch that video. The link will be down in this description. And you do want to make your own uh, homemade corn tortillas just because they're generally a lot sturdier than the ones that you can buy in the store. So that'll mean they'll hold up better in the uh, casserole as you bake it. Because there is nothing worse than soggy chips and nachos. And to start off, we're actually going to make refried beans, something that's going to go really great on the top of this nacho casserole. And to start that, I'm going to dice up about half of a medium onion. And you'll want to dice it up fairly finely, that way you don't have any large chunks when you're mashing your beans into the uh, paste that you want it to be. And speaking of beans, you can use whatever beans you want. I believe in this video I'm going to use pinto beans, but feel free to use whatever you want. And to start off, we're going to add a good amount of butter to a pan. Now, you, the way you make this is almost like making um, mashed potatoes. Just when you think you've added too much butter, add about another two tablespoons, uh, because this is what really makes the... Uh, refried beans creamy and delicious. Now you actually don't have to add in any type of seasoning. Uh, it's pretty good on its own but here I'm going to add in some chipotle chili uh, powder as long, along with some cilantro uh, just to spice it up a bit and give it a bit more of a depth of flavor. And now you'll want to cook the onions just till about uh, crispy. And here I go I'm going to add in the beans. Uh, still going to keep it on medium high heat. And after about five or eight minutes, the beans should be nice and soft and ready for mashing. So here I am. I'm just going to use a fork to mash them up. And if it does get too thin, add in some of that saved uh, bean liquid. Uh, it'll thicken it up real nicely while saving a lot of the flavor. And don't be too concerned if it seems too thin. It will thicken up as it cools. And one thing that you really want to do is you want to add a good amount of salt, especially to these beans. It really just brings out the flavor of the beans and makes it taste amazing. So you do want to add a good bit of salt. And of course remove it from the heat and let cool. Now I'm going to start by making some pico de gallo. And this is really going to bring a much needed freshness to the super cheesy uh, nacho casserole, which is always a refreshing little bite. And I'm going to use a fairly traditional set of vegetables for my pico de gallo. Uh, just one tomato, uh, one green bell pepper, one red bell pepper, and of course a uh, red onion. And feel free to dice up your vegetables however fine or chunky that you want. Personally, I like mine a bit chunkier. But if you, of course, like yours to be a bit more uniform and a bit smoother, dice it up much finer. And of course, you can add in whatever other types of seasonings that you want. Me, I like my pico de gallo to be a lot fresher. So really, I'm just going to add in some olive oil, some, um, some lemon, a lemon squeeze, uh, and some cilantro. Just to keep it really fresh. And don't be afraid of it being a little too acidic um, because it'll actually cut real nicely through the super creamy and richness of the nachos so you'll actually taste it much better. And if you know me, you know I like my red onion so I'm actually going to use probably a bit more than what you guys would but feel free to chop it up however much you want. And I'm going to throw it all into one bowl, give it a nice little tossing, a nice mixing with some olive oil. And we're going to move on to cutting open our avocado. Now you want to use a really nice and um, ripe avocado. This one obviously is so ripe that that little spot that you saw, that was me peeling off the tag, the sticker that was on the outside. And cutting up an avocado definitely can be a little difficult, but if you just follow what I'm doing here, it's pretty simple. And of course the ripeness of the avocado will determine how easy it is to cut open. Now I'm actually not going to mash this up or turn it into a guacamole just because again I really want a bunch of fresh toppings to go on this because of the fact that it's already super rich with how cheesy it is and everything else. So I'm just going to make it into a fine dice and then scoop out the pieces uh, trying not to mash up too much of it but of course because it's so ripe obviously pieces are just going to get mashed up on their own. But definitely want to sprinkle some salt and maybe some pepper on this just to give it a bit more of a seasoning. Avocado on its own is really tasty and creamy, but it could be a little bit bland, at least in my taste. And now I'm going to move on to dicing up, or actually not dicing, but very finely chopping some radishes. And this is just going to add some really nice color on top. Uh, not so much flavor, but it's going to look really nice. And now on to the final assembly of our nachos. We're going to take our queso dip that we made in the previous video and we're going to start off by putting a nice thin layer on the bottom of our 
a cast iron skillet, and we're going to make this in a cast iron skillet just because it's easier to serve it that way. But feel free to use a casserole dish or whatever other dish that you have that's oven safe. And now I'm going to add in some of my homemade corn tortilla chips with, of course, pouring another layer of queso dip on top. And you really do want to fill it up close to the edge, but not too far uh, near the edge just because it will bubble up and you don't want it to bubble over and absolutely destroy your oven. And with leaving a bit of room because we are going to sprinkle more cheese on top, you want to make sure all of your chips are covered in the queso dip. This will make a nice thick base for our nachos that we're actually going to be building on top of this. And of course you want to add another good bit of cheese on top, that way we can put it under the broiler after baking it. Uh, just gives us another more sturdy layer to build our nachos. Now what's great about nachos is you can really add whatever toppings you want. Here I just had some leftover chorizo that I made, that I had left over from when I made the queso dip, so I'm going to sprinkle that on the bottom. Of course adding in some leftover uh, tortilla chips, and why not throw in some Doritos? Because no one says you have to just use regular bland corn tortilla chips. Uh, feel free to use Takis or whatever. And of course you're going to want to sprinkle some more cheese on top of that. And we're going to put it back in the oven to let the cheese melt. And of course this is actually going to be the hardest part of this whole process. And it's going to be topping the nachos. Reason being is because you're just going to naturally want to dig right in. But just hold off. Put all the toppings that you work so hard to create on top. And it will just make it that much better. So here I'm going to add in the refried beans. Uh, the pico de gallo. Some of the avocados. Of course trying to spill it all everywhere uh, in the process because why not. Now we're going to sprinkle on some of our radishes uh, just to give it a nice color and of course some more cilantro on top because I am a personal fan of cilantro. And there you have it. That's how you make the greatest nacho casserole probably of all time. You can of course serve this with whatever you want. Me, I'm just going to serve it with some lime and some sour cream. And now this does make for an amazing party food. Uh, just make sure you have spoons on hand because once you get to the bottom, that's when the good bit really starts. So please like, comment, subscribe, and uh, check us out on Instagram for our latest videos. Peace!